Today on Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll take an inside look at the revived UDC men's and women's basketball programs, and we'll speak to head coaches Jeff Ruland and Jay Butler. We'll also get a student athlete's perspective on the rise of the Firebirds as we chat with local Washington, D.C. product UDC point guard Nigel Munson out of DeMatha High School. Lastly, we'll hear from Director of Athletics Patricia Thomas and Associate Director of Athletics Patrick Knapp and talk about some of the exciting events UDC Athletics has planned for the future. Hello, this is Firebird Nation Sports Update, and I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. Firebird Nation Sports Update is your one-stop shop for all things UDC athletics. Flap your wings and get ready to soar because the Firebird is rising in the nation's capital. The University of the District of Columbia just broke ground on a new student center. There are plans for the first ever dorm on the UDC Van Ness campus. Things are happening at the University of the District of Columbia, and nowhere is it more evident than in the UDC Athletic Department. The 2011-2012 academic year will be a historic one for the University of District of Columbia Athletics. The university currently sponsors 10 athletic programs at the Division II level. In July 2011, Director of Athletics Patricia Thomas, along with University President Alan Sessoms, guided the University of the District of Columbia into full membership in the East Coast Conference, marking the university's first ever conference affiliation. In the fall sports season, the UDC women's tennis team won the ECC Tennis Championship under the leadership of ECC Coach of the Year, Dickie Mahaffey. And the men's tennis team expects to be exceptionally competitive this spring in their championship season. The men's soccer team experienced a dramatic turnaround this season under first-year head coach Matt Thompson, finishing the season with an 8-5-4 and four record. The women's volleyball team was riddled with injuries but still battled hard in the ultra-competitive East Coast Conference. The men's and women's cross-country teams showed marked improvement over past, with junior Hillary Muggan finishing second in the men's ECC championships. Men's and women's basketball are both shooting for banner years in the ECC and beyond, and they're both off to phenomenal starts, with the men sitting at 15-3 and, and the women at an identical 15-3 and record. You can watch all home games live on the internet and all remaining road games are also available audio streamed live as well. In addition to basketball, the women's indoor track and field team is currently competing and giving it their all every day. The athletic department in general has undergone significant positive changes over the last several months. Firebirds Forever, which is the first ever booster club for athletics, was launched in October. The department is undertaking several other key initiatives for the first time as well including season tickets for basketball, corporate sponsorships, marketing and promotions opportunities, and the inaugural Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony, which will be held on February 17th. For more information on the UDC sports programs and the schedule of events, you can visit the website at www.udcfirebirds.com. When I come back, we'll visit with UDC's head men's and women's basketball coaches, Jeff Ruland and Jay Butler. Both the men's and women's basketball teams at UDC are off to tremendous starts this year. In fact, they both have identical records at 15-3 and 6-2 and and in the East Coast Conference. It's just a phenomenal story in Washington, D.C. sports. Joining us today on the Firebird Nation Sports Update are the architects of the men's and women's basketball programs, head coach Jeff Ruland and head coach Jay Butler. Coaches, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Coach Ruland, let's start with you. Uh, two years ago, you came here to UDC. You had a 1-20 season. Last year, you were 11-15, and 15, a definite progression. Now you're sitting at 15-3. and three. To what do you attribute that, that dramatic turnaround? Well, if I, you know, first of all, it's, you're only as good as your players, obviously, and, and your staff. I've got a great staff in Terrell Stokes and Tony, Tony Yachty, who played with me. Terrell was obviously a star at, at Maryland, and he's been here from the beginning, so I couldn't have done it without him. You know, obviously have some great players, but uh, you know, we're brought here by the president and obviously Patricia Thomas, our AD, to, to get things done, and uh, that's what we've tried to do. 
Now tell some of our viewers who maybe haven't seen you play yet what they could expect to see if they came out to a UDC game. No, I think we play an exciting style of basketball. You know, uh, we build a program on defense. Uh, we practice that a, a lot, but we also like to get out and run and, and share the basketball, fast breaks, shoot the threes when we're open, and uh, play the game the way it's supposed to be played. It's pretty it's fun to watch. Coach Butler, let's turn it over to you now. This is your ninth season as head coach at UDC. You've had success in the past. Your team went to the NCAA tournament in 2009. What's this year's team all about? Uh, this year's team's been a surprise. Uh, last year, we lost uh, Lily McGill, who was an uh, All-American here. So this year, going into the season, we had seven seniors. And I uh, knew we had the leadership, but I knew we just it's going to take hard work. And this year, the, the young ladies came out and worked hard in the preseason. And uh, we started off really hot. And uh, right now, we're playing without our senior uh, leading scorer, Javilla Bonner. So right now, I just talked to them about just being a team effort. And right now, they're just playing very well together. The chemistry's there. And uh, we're playing exciting basketball. Yeah, Jamila Bonner is your superstar, so to speak. And you must have a very deep roster being able to uh, get to where you are without her. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, just being ready to play. And uh, we got 15, 16 kids on the roster. And we just talk about keeping the wheels turning, being ready when your numbers call. And right now, we got so many kids that have stepped up and played well. Lauren Brittenham, she's averaging 14 points per game. Donna Manisa, she's leading us in rebounding. Jasmine Rich, she's number one in the conference in assists. So right now, we're just doing it by committee. And uh, right now, they're playing very well together. And I'm excited about uh, going down the stretch competing for the ECC championship. That's great. Uh, Coach Rule and uh, Nigel Munson and Brandon Herbert, uh, they're your senior captains, your leading scorers. What do those two players mean to you and, and mean to the program in general? Well, they're the, uh, the face of the program, you know, not them to shine the, uh, the other guys, obviously, but, you know, Nigel coming here and then Brandon, uh, both from quality D1 uh, universities, uh, I think they're both deserving of being All-Americans. And, uh, you know, they lead on and off the court. They've been extremely uh, diligent in the classroom and, uh, when your best players practice, you know, they're the they're hardest workers in practice, then, then you're going to be a good team. Now, Nigel's from uh, local area, DeMatha, DeMatha High, High School, sure. and Brandon Herbert is somewhat local from Baltimore, sure. McDonough School. How were you able to attract those two uh, Division One transfers to UDC? Uh, got, we got a tip about uh, Nigel and uh, turned out to be, uh, you know, real that he wanted to come back and play. and. Convinced him this was a place for him to be, and then uh, Coach Stokes had recruited uh, Brandon when he was a coach at Loyola, and we got him in the fold, and it helped that Nigel was already here, and you know, with him, with uh, with Keith Brooks and Dyreek Jones, uh, pretty much for the cornerstone of this program. So those guys, you know, were the first guys that we brought in. There's a definite buzz around campus and in the community about UDC basketball. How is that as coaches to see that and, and, and see that excitement? I'll open that up to either one of you. Well, Coach has been here, you know, longer, and he's he's been he's been he's done it already here. We're trying to get to the tournament. Uh, it's exciting. I love watching his team play. Uh, it would be nice if uh, we could get some more people in the stands, though, because uh, we could really use uh, a great home home court advantage. I don't know what the streak was, unfortunately. It stopped the other night against Post, a home winning streak, but you know, if you can take care of your, your home court and, and do halfway decent on the road, then you, you, know, you have, a chance. have a chance. Coach, how do you feel about the excitement uh, around the program? I've been here since 2001, and right now it's the highest it ever been. Uh, we've went from being an independent school to now we're in the ECC, and uh, now you can go out and you, in the grocery stores. You have you know, alumni stop you and say, hey, I see you in the paper, you're doing good. And the buzz is there, and I think we're doing well. Both teams get along very well, and I just think right now the sky's the limit. I think Coach Rule is doing a great job. He has a chance to make the NCAA. We have a chance to make the NCAA. So I just think right now for the athletic department, for the school, it's, it's really big right now. You mentioned the East Coast Conference, the ECC. What's that meant to the programs being part of a conference? Oh, it's terrific. It's, uh, it's a lot easier scheduling games. and. You know, we still have to take some, some decent bus rides, but it's, you know, it's up in uh, one of the world's greatest cities, New York, so that, that's good. It's, uh, it's done away with the trips to North Carolina and, and West Virginia, nothing against them, but uh, it's hard when you, you throw the ball up and it starts out the game, it's eight against five. 
Right. Now, both your programs seem to enjoy an up-tempo style, a bit of a run-and-gun style that the players certainly love and the fans like to watch. What influence is that for, for either one of you? Uh, well, I played uh, high school ball at Archbishop Carroll, and then I went on to move on to Virginia Union. And we, just an up-tempo style, preach defense. Uh, both of my former coaches, high school and college, we talked about defense first. And we like to press for 40 minutes and get up and down. So right now we've just been playing well defensively. I think we rank in the top 20 in a bunch of different categories. So we just preach defense, and right now the ladies are buying into it. I don't want to date myself, but I uh, grew up watching the great Nick teams, so sharing the basketball. That's, that's always been something I believed in. And, you know, I wasn't always close to 300 pounds, so I actually like to run up and down the court way back when, uh, when I played. So it's a fun style to play. Yeah, and certainly the fans love to watch it. So is there anything else uh, that you'd like for the community to know or our viewers to know about UDC basketball or, or the UDC athletic department? No, just that uh, you know UDC is is committed uh, to to bringing in you know quality student athletes that you know come out and obviously support support Coach Butler and and the men's basketball team, but the other sports also. Well, coaches, that's about all the time we have. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we'll see an ECC league title. Hopefully, uh, NCAA tournament berth as well. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, coming up next on the Firebird Nation Sports Update, we'll have a special. Student athlete feature with Nigel Munson, UDC point guard. Hello, I'm Patricia Thomas, Director of Athletics at the University of the District of Columbia. As a new age begins in UDC athletics, I invite you and the entire Washington, D.C. community to support our athletic programs. Please come out to cheer on our men's and women's basketball teams this winter as we compete in our inaugural season in the East Coast Conference. Visit us on the web at www.udcfirebirds.com for schedules and more information. Thank you for your support and go Firebirds! I'm here with UDC senior captain and point guard Nigel Munson. Nigel, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Uh, Nigel, this year you're off to an impressive 13 and two start, four and one in the East Coast Conference. Uh, what do you attribute this strong season and this strong start to? Um, working hard every day in practice, listening to what the coaches are telling us as far as taking care of defense, then our offense will come. So we've just been keying in on what the coach has been telling us, and that's why we had so much success. Now, two years ago, you were part of the team that went 1-20. Last year, you were 11-15. and 15. Now you're looking at 13-2 and two and hopefully more wins to come. What do you attribute the turnaround to as compared to years past? Um, experience. We have five seniors this year. We have two new seniors, but the three seniors that have been here, we all you know, got the young guys together, and we got one main goal, and that's to do better than we did previous years. So that's what we're doing. And Jeff Rulin is the head coach uh, in the Washington, D.C. area. He's a legend, right. NBA all-star, Washington Bullet. Um, what's it like playing for a guy like Jeff Rulin, who has NBA experience but also Division One coaching experience? Um, it's it's uh it's great for me because um I want to play basketball beyond the college level. I want to play on the highest level. So for right right now, like he teaches me a lot on and off the court. So it's 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 been a great experience. And you're a local product. Uh, you went to Dematha High School. Yeah. What's it like uh, coming back to the Washington D.C. area and, and playing in your hometown? Oh, it's always good to play here in D.C. because I get a lot of love. Being from DeMatha, getting love there and having success uh, has been great. And the fan support has been the good this year? The fan support has been great this year. Had Excellent. a lot of people come out. And now, is there an ECC championship, possibly an NCAA tournament uh, berth in the future for UDC? Is that something you guys talk about? That's something we uh, talk about every day. And I think if we keep continuing to win our games, we can, we can make it. Now describe uh, for some of our viewers who haven't seen you play yet, what, what type of player is Nigel Munson? Um, I'm a pass first point guard. Basically, I do whatever it takes to you know, win a game. You know, if I got to pass it to a player where he can make a shot or if I have to take over a game to score, you know, I'm willing to do that, whatever I have to do to win. 
And can you describe for us uh, who some of your mentors might have been uh, growing up in basketball and who are some of the people you've looked up to? Um, Steve Francis, he came through my uh, AAU program, the DC Warriors, and my godfather, Tony Langley, he told me a lot growing up. He, uh, I met him when I was 10, and ever since then he taught me a lot. Now it seems like UDC, not only the basketball program, but also uh, the university and the athletic department uh, in general is going through a lot of transformation, a lot of changes. Uh, have you noticed that, and, and what do you think of that? With the transition that the school is making? Um, I just think uh, us winning games and, you know, it, it's been great for the UDC as a whole. So uh, we just want to continue to, the good work. And what do you like about uh, attending UDC uh, in general? Um, being home and, you know, the great staff we have here at UDC, you get a lot of support from different areas on and off the court. So that's what I love about it. Talk a little bit more about the staff. We talked about uh, Coach Rulins. Tell us about your other assistant coaches and what they've meant to you. Oh, Coach Yachts, he, uh, he also played ball with Coach Rulin at Iona in college. He taught me a lot because he's a, he's a guard, so he teaches me a lot. Um, Coach Stokes, he played point guard at Maryland University, and I'm a point guard, so he teaches me a lot on and off the court, so it's been great. Excellent. Well, thanks for your time today, Nigel, and uh, best of luck to you, and hopefully we will see uh, the UDC Firebirds uh, in the postseason, the ECC championship, and hopefully an NCAA tournament as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Coming up next, I'll chat with UDC Director of Athletics, Patricia Thomas, and Associate Director of Athletics, Patrick Knapp. Hello, I'm Patricia Thomas, Director of Athletics at the University of the District of Columbia. As a new age begins in UDC athletics, I invite you and the entire Washington, D.C. community to support our athletic programs. Please come out to cheer on our men's and women's basketball teams this winter as we compete in our inaugural season in the East Coast Conference. Visit us on the web at www.udcfirebirds.com for schedules and more information. Thank you for your support and go Firebirds! We're joined by UDC Director of Athletics, Patricia Thomas, and Associate Director of Athletics for External Affairs, Patrick Knapp. There seems to be a transformation going on at the University of the District of Columbia. Patricia, let me start with you. What is your vision for the athletic department? Our vision is to uh, develop a program that is consistent with the mission and goals of the university and to um, just establish a program that is nationally recognized. And what are, the, what are the sports that UDC has currently? We currently offer 10 sports for men and women, uh, men's and women's basketball, uh, men's and women's cross country, men's and women's tennis, men's soccer, volleyball, and women's indoor and outdoor track and field. And how many student athletes does that translate into approximately? Approximately 100 student athletes. Interesting. Patrick, let me turn it to you now. I understand there's a big Hall of Fame event coming up on February uh, 17th. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Thank you for asking, Matt. This is a uh, signature event as designated by the president of the university. And uh, during our 160th anniversary here at the University of the District of Columbia, uh, we needed to bring athletics to the forefront in this celebration. And on February 17th, uh, here in Washington, D.C., we will be honoring uh, five individuals from our great athletic past, as well as one team. And who are the individual inductees who are going into the Hall of Fame? Uh, we'll start with uh, legendary basketball coach, men's basketball coach, Will Jones, who was here from 1979 to 1999. He's the winningest coach in the university's history. Uh, he also coached two Final Four teams, and his 1982 team won the national championship. We are, as well, inducting the 1982 national championship team that went 25-5 and five that year had two All-Americans, Michael Britt and Earl Jones. Uh, they went undefeated at home, and it was also the first year that UDC basketball program ever played in its own arena here on campus. Uh, after Will Jones and the 82 championship team, we have, we have a great slate. We have Leonard Tony Upson, 
who was a standout basketball player for D.C. Teachers College from 1960 to 64. Uh, he was the MVP all four years he played here for his team, and three years in a row we were in the Maryland Intercollegiate Conference, uh, and he was the MVP of that conference all three years. He then coached a little bit after that. Uh, we then have Elizabeth Young, uh, the first UDC track and field female All-American in sports here uh, at the university. Uh, we then have Dr. Phil Fox, who, uh, who went to Wilson's Teachers College, then was an administrator at DC Teachers College in the early 60s. But Dr. Fox is also known as an outstanding basketball official, not only locally, but regionally uh, for NCAA men's basketball. He's mentored many, many uh, other officials here in the area. Dr. Fox also refereed Will Chamberlain's final game, triple overtime game between Kansas and North Carolina back in 1957, I believe it was. And then we have uh, one of our stars, uh, because we have an award here at the university uh, called the Reslin Woodruff Henley uh, Award, uh, Student Athlete Award. Uh, Reslin Henley played at Miners Teachers College, coached there afterwards, played football and basketball, was a star in both sports. He then went on and served his country in the South Pacific in World War II and passed away, uh, I believe, in the early 50s. That, that's quite an esteemed group. Uh, how can people get information about the Hall of Fame? The Hall of Fame will be uh, on our website. It's on our athletic department website, but also udc.edu slash HOF will take you right to a spot where you get all the information on the Hall of Fame, and you can sign up and register or donate to the event. What a tremendous event for the community and, and for the District of Columbia. Uh, Patricia, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, some other initiatives that the University uh, of District of Columbia is working on in the Athletic Department, aside from the Hall of Fame. In addition to the Hall of Fame, we are very, very pleased that we've launched our uh, support group for Athletics Firebirds Forever. Um, that membership has grown um, tremendously. The response has been outstanding, and we're, we're very, very pleased with the continued growth of um, support in that area. Um, just connecting with alumni last weekend, we hosted the um, university's alumni association um, during a doubleheader, men's women's basketball. We had a tremendous uh, response to that event as well. Our student athletes are continuing to be engaged in the community with um, many initiatives. Uh, this spring we will be um, supporting the Make-A-Wish Foundation, um, and so we're just continuing to, uh, to grow. A lot of community engagement. That sounds exciting and great for the community and, and for the student athletes as well. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the University of District of Columbia under your leadership and President Sessom has joined the East Coast Conference this past July. Tell us a little bit about that and what that means to the university and to the athletic department. Joining the East Coast Conference was a significant milestone for the university. It was the first time that the university has been um, a part of a, a, an NCAA conference. Um, it provides visibility for us throughout the East Coast and certainly in the New York metropolitan area. Uh, it, enhances uh, the uh, experiences of our student athletes, um, gives us an opportunity to vie for, con for championships, um, automatic bids in the NCAA, and the East Coast Conference also provides outstanding opportunities in terms of leadership as well as community engagement. Seems like a great opportunity for the department and for the student athletes. Absolutely. Um, tell us a little bit about how the community can get involved in, in what UDC is doing in the athletic department. Supporting our student athletes coming to our contests and I think the easiest way for the community to get involved and find out what we're doing is to visit our website um, www.udcfirebirds and um, you know, again, just you know, supporting our student athletes in um, in many ways. Joining Firebirds Forever is also another way that um, members of the community can connect with us. I understand there's season ticket opportunities for basketball now, which is the first time that that's happened in quite some time. That has been uh, that has been a great delight for us. Uh, not only bringing more supporters to the university, but getting the word out. Uh, not just for basketball, Matt, but for our entire athletic department. And uh, that's been a very successful venture, yes. And what's the level of commitment from the president and from the University of District of Columbia in general 
uh, towards the athletic department. Obviously, that requires a significant commitment from the university. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely, Matthew. I'm certainly beginning with the president and the board of trustees. Uh, the support uh, has been tremendous. And as a matter of fact, President Sessoms is now a member of the NCAA President's Council. And, and again, that's just a significant uh, indication that he supports athletics. He understands that athletics is absolutely a part of the educational mission of the university. Uh, the support has just been tremendous. Well, that's just great. It seems like there's so much going on at the university and that in the athletic department in, in particular. I uh, just want to thank you both for joining us, and, and we all look forward to uh, the many great things to come for UDC Athletics in the future. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Firebird Nation Sports Update. I'm your host, Matt Rienzo. The Firebird is rising in the nation's capital, and we're glad you're along for the ride.